we're seeing you here in Among the Beasts. Was there something about Lola or working with writer Matthew Newton as the writer director that really drew you to be a part of this film? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. So I, I think I got this. I remember getting the audition at a time when I was like really, I was really busy. I had a lot of, I was like, I had a lot of things going on and you know, sometimes you get an audition for, you get indie movies, uh, auditions, and you're sort of like, yeah, okay. And I remember reading the character description before I like read the sides or anything. And I read the character description and I was like, they don't want me. And uh, I like told my agents, I was like, thank you. But like, I think that they're, I'm not what they're looking for. And then they were like, no, Matthew really wants to see you. He was a fan of Sneaky Pete. And and I was like, okay. And then I read this and I hadn't, even, I don't even think I'd opened the sides at that point. I think I just read the character description. And then I read the sides and I was like, oh, this is actually really good. And then I read the script and I was like, oh, this is a good script. And I was like, and this is a different character and really interesting. And then I sent in a self tape. And then like the next day I get a call to go and meet with Matthew at um, and like do a director session with him and I loved the way he worked and like he was very much an actor's director and we had like a really fun session together and I was like I hope I get this part like this is so fun and um, yeah and he continued to like something I really love about the way he works is like he's constantly evolving characters and story and um, Lola really evolved I loved her on the page to begin with but then like we really you know, she really evolved as time went on. And I really like what we found. I was going to say LT seems to be like the muscle and Lola seems to be like the brains of the operation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. How did they describe their relationship? Obviously, they have a connection based on the missing individuals in their life. Yeah, I think that it's this, their relationship is really interesting because it's, you know, it's sort of this thing where they have this like un this like shared trauma or, but it's not even just trauma it's a, yeah and it's it's a trauma it's a, and a thing that they like need in their lives but their personalities themselves don't necessarily mesh and so i think that they're trying to like i think that it's saying of this thing of they're both actually trying the best that they can to sort of be there for one another as like empathetic human beings and to like but but on the surface, like these two people would not sit and have a cup, of, you know, would not have a drink together at the beginning of the movie, at least. Um, but I think that there's something really interesting there that we find that like speaks to human dynamics, like our needs to connect while like personality stuff can be clashing. And yeah. Well, all of it was edge of your seat watching. There's every single moment you're left wondering what's going to happen next and next and next. Was there a scene that you found more challenging for yourself to film or one that you were surprised in the moment that really stood out to you after having read it on the page? Um, it's funny that you say after write, having read it on the page because so much of it changed at the last minute. <laughs> like there was a lot of stuff that Matthew would be like, I had this great idea. We're going to completely scrap that one scene. And then instead we're going to do this thing. <laughs> and it'd be like, okay. And we just had to like trust. And I think it paid off. Um, but my favorite scene, I think that um, I think is also my, my favorite scene of mine that like when I watch it back, I think is still my favorite is that laundry is a laundromat scene. Um, I thought that it was, it was, it's so fun. And we, cause I'm like, it's, it's an action sequence in a way that, an everyday human would deal with an action sequence, you know, like she's dealing with it to the best of her ability. And it's like, and it's exciting. And there's, you know, um, there's danger, but it's also very real. And like, she's fighting with all of the tools she sort of can muster in that moment. There is such an adrenaline rush and intensity to every single scene. How did you shake off a long day of being on set and being kind of like at a hundred <laughs> with your heart rate <laughs> every single moment while filming? I think it was this thing where like, I don't know, I'm also a little insane. And when I'm like working on a movie, I like never fully shake it off. I'm like, talk to me in a week. <laughs> like whenever, whenever I'm like in a movie, I'm like, I like, I can't be a person to the outside world <laughs> until I'm like done with the, <laughs> done with the project. But um, I, I do also think that it, because it was so demanding and so high energy that I would just leave every day. Like I would give 110% of my energy every single day. And so by the, by the time I got home, I was just like comatose. <laughs> 
was there any room to improv when it came to scenes? I know you said you were fleshing things out sort of by the by, but was the dialogue sort of altered anyway by what you felt in the moment? Um, Matthew is very open to like our, um, you know, our, our feedback on the, on the dialogue. And he was very like, you know, he was always, he was always saying if there's something that doesn't feel like the way that you would say it, uh, say it the way that you would, or, um, you know, or tell me how, like the better way to say it. Um, but I think that for the most part though, the dialogue was as written, um, I think that it was more like finding the life through so I'm like the writing was so good to begin with that like it you know we would have conversations about things and sometimes that would be reflected in new pages that uh, Matthew brought to us but yeah I mean the writing was so good that we really just it was really about like finding the life and the different possibilities within what was written and sometimes something would be thrown in and stuff but yeah it wasn't a very improv-y movie. There are such wonderful scenes between you and Tori Kittles and Saruna, so talk about working with those wonderful gentlemen on screen. I mean, they're both brilliant. I, Tori is like such a gem and he's like such a, he's such a brilliant actor and is so giving and like, um, and I think, yeah, and he, and he has this, I feel like one thing that I sort of learned from Tori was how, was the complete, how so much can be communicated with so little, like he's just, standing that you just he's just having the thoughts and you see it and you're on the ride with him and being in a scene with him like it makes it that much more compelling too um yeah oh you know what there was some improv in Sharonis and I some of our stuff we did we some of that stuff was more we played with a little bit more yeah well it's a thrill ride through and through as I mentioned what is it you think will make it such a fan favorite film or maybe such uh, an edge of your seat watch uh, when people put on Among the Beasts? I think that it's really just, it's, I think it's really the characters that drive it through. Like, I think that the, the story is really compelling and it's, and it's a ride and it's, but I think what you really get hooked in by who these humans are. And I think that like, you know, it's, it's a story that I think it's, it, you know, what we we really work to find like who these humans are and i think matthew really likes working in a sort of like verite kind of way you know with there's that like there's a scene at the beginning with the um with the veterans that was actually just like these veterans talking and stuff and i think he's really interested in finding like you know the real life and i think that and you know tori me and tori and the rest of the cast sort of invested in that way and um and i think that you really get hooked into who these characters are and so we really like take you on this ride i think Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about the wonderful work you did do on Sneaky Peek. What did you take away from working on that series? Was it a more gift for comedy or less of an interest in comedy dramas? Was it the wonderful relationships you guys had on screen? Because you did feel so familial and I was super sad when Sneaky Pete ended so. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, I learned, I got so much out of that show and like I, the cat, we're all still close. Like we're all still, we all still talk. I just directed a short film that I got both Peter and Marin to do parts in. <laughs> um, that was so fun. And um, I don't know, I learned so much. I got this masterclass from these amazing actors, but, tr and like, I don't know, I like things that like Giovanni would whisper in my ear between takes of like, try this thing that I like still carry with me. And like, I'm like, yeah, that was a good <laughs> acting tip and stuff. And Margot, you know, and Marin who taught me to question everything. And um, yeah, I don't know, there's, I, I can point to like each, something that like each actor gave that I like learned from each actor. And, but really like, it was just such, yeah, we really built a family. And I think like we, that we will always be like, you know, when we're all back together, it's always like, we're still family and it's very special. <laughs> Well, you're also have a lot going on upcoming. You mentioned you directed a film. You're in Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. What does it mean to you to be a part of a Marvel project? That's a big deal. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's yeah, it's funny because it comes out the same day as Among the Beasts, and so I've been doing. I did press for that earlier today when I'm doing this. It's um, it's cool. It's a. I think it's a really special show. I think it's like it really um. 
it it like takes on a lot it's the first solo african-american teenage girl superhero and like it's an all-female writer's room that's very diverse and like you know i get to be like i i get to I, I feel like because i'm like white passing i've played so many white characters and i really get to like be my like latina self in this and it's really fun and it's genuinely a good it's a good show and now that people are starting to see it and the animation's unlike anything you've ever seen the music and i'm just like it feels i feel very lucky that not only do i get to be a part of like the marvel world but also that i get to do it with this like very very special show well, uh, be ready for many more people to reach out to you on social media and tell you what a wonderful project this is and what it means to them that you're a part of it. And especially with the topic and it being such a diverse cast, a POC cast, it, it really means a lot to so many of us. What would you like to say to everyone who are fans and supporters of the wonderful work you do on our screens? Well, I guess just thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And I, I really, I... It's very appreciated and yeah.